Cassie, you are together with Ryan Leslie, one of the, the greatest guys which actually put you in that position. And what did you do when you got there? Came over. Always treat people good. I'm like, the, the biggest winner out of this is Ryan Leslie. I would love to be that guy which is like, yeah, I was screwed over. It's a, hey, it's fine. I'd rather be the guy that's screwed over if I'm being honest because look at P. Diddy right now. Yes, he screwed so many people over, but now it's coming back around. When you have a smoking hot product on your hands, mm. people get excited about the product. People fall in love with the product. And Puffy fell in love with Cassie. And that's his girlfriend today. <laughs> Cassie and Diddy <laughs> rolled up. <laughs> you can see it in his mannerisms. It's like, ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I fumbled the bag there. But what, what were you supposed to do, bro? I can't even, I can't even hate Ryan. I can't even hate the dude. I can't even hate the guy. He lives the philosophy that I preach. Be a nice person, be nice to everybody. I know right now it's probably not the time to talk about Cassie because of Diddy and Cassie's situation, but I really wish Ryan Leslie and Cassie worked out. Like, if you remember I'm Addicted to You, you knew, oh, you knew the chemistry between Ryan Leslie and Cassie. I, like, shipped that relationship, that situation ship so much. By now, you're probably well aware that Cassie has been happily married to celebrity trainer Alex Fine since 2019, and they share two children together. But long before Alex, Cassie was dating Sean P. Diddy Combs. And before Diddy, she was in a relationship with singer, songwriter, and producer Ryan Leslie. The, the nice story guy. about Cassie going from this to this is quite messy. Now, let's take a little trip way back in time. Ryan scored a perfect 1600 on the SATs at the age of 14 and enrolled at Harvard at the age of 15. Sometime around 2004, 26 year old Ryan was at a nightclub when he met 18 year old model Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie. They began dating and Ryan continued working on his music and produced tracks for Bad Boy Records, Usher, Britney Spears and Beyonce, while Cassie pursued her modeling career. Ryan's passion for making and performing <laughs> music impressed label executives. Do you guys think that Ryan Leslie is a garbage artist? Do you think so? Because like, now that I listen to some of his tracks, I'm like, uh, I don't know if you're that good. I mean, like when I was younger, I was a big Ryan Leslie fan. I was like, oh my God, Ryan, he's gonna be, he's the next guy. And then he started like, kind of like producing for Kanye West. And he did like, I think it was like, was a Good Friday, there was a mixtape which Kanye released and Ryan Leslie was on it and I was like, oh my God, he's, he's finally got his break. But then again, Kanye kind of like, I don't know, there's this Kanye curse where everyone which gets connected to Kanye West, they flop later on. I mean, you have Big Sean, Pusha T, and then there was like, Panda, 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 Canada, Banana, Panda. And that was also garbage from Antonio L.A. Reed to Tommy Mottola. But despite the respect he was earning in the industry, his solo career hit a mm. snag. He recorded an album entitled Just Right, and it was set to be released in 2005. However, Ryan told Parlay Magazine the album was never officially released because there was a, quote, lack of demand for it in the marketplace. He wanted to dominate the charts, but he knew he had to switch things up. The social network site MySpace had just launched and Ryan and his friends all created user profiles. During a live performance, Ryan stated that he and his... There's nothing worse than being a producer that's super talented like Ryan Leslie is. You can play all the instruments, right? But you're not hot. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I think God has like a sense of humor, like he can... He can build you like you're this muscular guy, which is like super attractive, but then bam, then he takes away your intelligence. You can't be the ultimate giga chad because if you are, then it's unfair, right? They always take away something like LeBron, great, super famous and everything, but then the hair is gone. You're just like, oh, why? Why do you have to do that? It's decided to test the platform by concocting a social experiment. 
they created a profile for Cassie and included some of her cute modeling mm. photos. Ryan added, when you put a beautiful woman on MySpace, both guys and girls would like to be her friend. Yeah. The profile went from zero to 650,000 friends. Ryan wasn't satisfied, though. He wanted to find a way to turn those friends into customers. So he asked Cassie if she would be interested in recording a song. Even though she wasn't a traditional or professionally trained singer, she agreed. Cassie recorded the track Me and You, which Ryan wrote and produced. Then they put the song on her MySpace profile and the track skyrocketed. Despite many people being unimpressed with her voice, the song received 20,000 plays you per day me. on her MySpace page. You and me. It didn't take long for record label executives to start blowing up Ryan's phone. Oh my One god. One of those callers. The snakes are lurking in the grass and when they see something that they can sink their teeth in, they do that. Ryan was so dumb. So dumb. But then again, he's the winner in this. So it's it's great, but I'm just saying, this this is the reason why they say nice guys finish last. Was Diddy. Ryan said Diddy made him an offer he couldn't mm. refuse. So Ryan decided to release Cassie's debut album on Bad Boy Records in a partnership with his production company. Cassie's self-titled debut album was released in August 2006 and debuted at number four on the Billboard 200. And then, well, you probably know what happens next. When you have a smoking hot product on your hands, mm. people get excited about the product. People fall in love with the product. And Puffy fell in love with Cassie. And that's his girlfriend today. <laughs> Cassie and Diddy <Jenny> rolled up. <laughs> You can see it in his mannerisms, it's like, ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I fumbled the bag there. But what, what were you supposed to do, bro? I can't even, I can't even hate Ryan. I can't even hate the guy. He lives the philosophy that I preach. Be a nice person, be nice to everybody. Off into the sunset and made their first public appearance as a couple oh in 2012. God. She became the face of his new Sean John women's collection. And although she has dropped a few singles and made guest appearances in music videos for other artists and collaborated with Diddy, she has yet to release another studio album. She and Diddy embarked on a tumultuous relationship that lasted for 12 years and culminated with their 2019 breakup. And what happened to Ryan once he and Cassie broke up? Well, he described himself as being completely heartbroken. Not only did he lose his girlfriend, but he lost his breakout R&B creation. And his deal with Bad Boy Records went sour as well. Ryan was asked about the situation in several interviews, but he always chose to take the high road. He told Essence Magazine, I've let folks pretty deeply into the areas of my life that I believe to be insightful, inspirational, and motivational. So the rest of it, I look at it as mine. He tried to move on and was linked to supermodel Chanel Iman, but <laughs> it didn't last. Following their breakup, he shared the song uh... Addiction on his MySpace profile. The song features Cassie and Fabulous. <laughs> And, and he just kept on flopping. Now nah, he's not a he's not a flopper, but that's a bitter situation. But then again, look at everything now. Sometimes the grass isn't always greener. Karma swings back around, whether you like it or not. And listen, Cassie, you threw somebody under the bus which actually cared about you, so you can be with this monster of a human being. It's a shocking fall from grace. In less than a year, P. Diddy went from beloved music icon to disgraced sexual predator, at least according to the charges from the feds. Right now, he's behind bars in New York, the same place where just last year, he was given a key to the city. It was a disturbing set of allegations that led to Diddy's arrest in the way of multiple civil suits brought by accusers. And in some of those suits, co-defendants are listed, and in others, celebrities. Could it be a time of reckoning for them too? I love him, I want to be with him. But he's not a, he's not a good person, but I love him, I want to be with him. Everything is so flashy. 
And the, the guy which is actually there for you, the good guy, the guy, the, he's, he's there. He wakes up every day. He goes to his work, working for you. Oh, baby, I want a concert ticket to this guy to go and watch my favorite artist. Yes, you'll get it, baby. I believe in you. I love you. Guess what? As she's going to the concert, the artist brings her up on stage and she is twerking and dancing for the artist. The people that you walk on in order to get to the top are the same people that are gonna watch you fall when you're falling. I just don't understand why Cassie would wait until now to come out and tell her story. Yeah, but it's given opportunist. It's given she's broke. It's given she's trying to tear a black man down. You sound crazy. That's what it's given. You sound insane and you sound like an enabler. But let's talk about why she would come out now and file her lawsuit. If Cassie wanted justice on what she'd been through, she had a deadline and the deadline was November the 24th, 2023. And that's because the New York Adult Survivors Act closes its window for people to be able to file a lawsuit against the perpetrators of their abuse. And I'm going to read exactly what it says here on this page. So it reads, the New York Adult Survivors Act temporarily eliminates the civil statute of limitations for survivors of sexual assault who were over 18 when it occurred. And I want everyone to hold on to the word civil because I'm going to speak about this later. This gives you the right to file a lawsuit against the perpetrator or others who facilitated the assault, regardless of how long ago it occurred. However, you must act quickly because this window closes on November the 24th, 2023. Then later, just to figure out that he's a monster and the person which you actually were with was the good guy. So, yes, I understand 100%, but it's stupid of women sometimes when they go on a whim or they go on their feelings because they're not really vetting the guys as they should be vetting them. They just go on attraction. Um, disturbing surveillance video shows Sean Diddy Combs beating, dragging Cassie Ventura in a hotel hallway in 2016. It's very graphic. Um, you can see her again beating her up and just basically like this is somebody who wants to kill their partner. Mm. This There's no need to sugarcoat it and I think that the whole Kim Porter case needs to come up again. Mm. I know it's decades later but I mean there is so many emotions I felt when watching that video. The number one thing was wow she endured so much in that relationship. She had to take on a monster. Okay, couple thoughts. Y'all notice nobody defending the man publicly? Nobody. You want to know why? Why? Because they know he's guilty. They... Because they've seen his weird behavior firsthand. You think so? And the thing about Diddy is, like, these are not new rumors. People have been saying <coughs> stuff about him. They've been saying how weird he is, how aggressive he is, how he gets down. His bodyguard has come out and shared a lot of stories of the freaky, disgusting stuff he's seen him do. Um, and because, you know, it, it's a different era. I think it's just weird the fact that it's only when a pretty girl says something that people go up in arms, right? If Cassie was an ugly girl, do you think people would care about this? People don't care. <laughs> and that is pretty privilege at its finest. Where are his celebrity peers saying, oh my God, this is detestable. We do not stand for this. The way that women came forward after Harvey. Yeah. Where are they? Everybody's quiet. Why? Where's Ashton Kutcher? Where's, honestly, Usher? Where's Justin Bieber? Justin Bieber, I have no knowledge. They're not alleging his name in any of this, but Justin Bieber was very young when he came into Diddy's circle. And that tape you referenced of the two of them about to spend 48 mm -hmm. hours together or having just was disturbing. And there's no question he had a lot of exposure to this guy. And I think he should say something. But now if he's a victim, if he's a victim, he's in a very difficult spot because he's been abused. Yeah. And this brings up a lot, especially for a man. Yeah. It's very hard to go out and say that this has happened to you. But I, if, if he was a victim, God forbid, I encourage him to do it because you need someone strong like that to break the dam. You know, right now, Cassie's out there. She's been twisting in the wind I know. for a year. This other guy, Jones, he came forward. He's twisting. But if you actually had an Usher, uh, a Bieber, or, you know, someone like an Ashton Kutcher, who I don't think he was an abuse victim, but he was good friends with Diddy for a long time. 
come out and say what they know, it would show leadership and it would give the others who are on this list permission and the security of not being the only one who then has to worry about retribution. I, like, I, I, yes, I get it 100%. I feel sorry for this beautiful, gorgeous woman. I do 100%. But some of the blame has to go to you. Some of it has to. You allowed this for 10 years for 10 years and you let him do this to other women as well why not in the beginning just say listen let's get rid of this one i would have no problem with women if things like this happen she's honest she's like no because we gotta vet that out we need to know like honestly okay that is the person this is what happened great perfect he's out of here that's what i'm saying like this wouldn't even exist if she did not allow it for 10 years. You know, Kat said it best. All these big dick deviants catch a hell in 2024. That's what he said. Kat, Kat not lying. I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing having freaky shit. I don't care about the freaky shit. No, no, no. Big when, dick deviants on, different hold on, though. Hold on. If you're doing freaky stuff and everybody consensual, that's none of my business. Do whatever. But this is not what this is. This is very... This is off! Because mm. people are talking about the fact that, yeah, he was freaky and he was doing all these free calls and shit like that. So, it's one thing to be freaky, I don't care about that. But that's violence, that's a close fist, that's 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 all predatory type of behavior. It went way past that. A lot of people that was defending him was like, yeah, we freaky, freaky, so what? Nah, we're not there yet. We left that a long time ago. We're no longer in Kansas, Toto. We're, we're somewhere else. We're, we're somewhere. This is some other shit. Mm. That people know. They're looking at it and like, hmm, shrug. Mm hmm. Yeah. So the big change that's happening now, uh, beyond just the social media aspect of it, is before being a powerful person with a lot of money, influence, and entertainment meant you were untouchable. Why? Because you had your money in the newspaper. Everyone's careers depended on you. Yeah. Now there's a little bit more separation in that regard. So people like. Sean Combs can't exert the same kind of influence. The reason why when he was doing this in the 90s and early 2000s he was getting away with it is if you said anything, you was going to get fucked up. Now it's different. Mm. Now with the advent of cameras, every single place, people filming things on their cell phone, people documenting everything, it's switch. a lot easier for people to get caught up in these things where there's undeniable proof. A groundbreaking case brought forth just this week when 54-year-old Sean Diddy Combs was arrested on September 15th. He now faces some pretty serious federal charges, racketeering conspiracy, trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. Diddy was indicted by a federal grand jury and is now being held in Brooklyn at the Metropolitan Detention Center after he was twice denied bail. Diddy's attorneys say he was in New York for about a week before the arrest, anticipating the federal indictment. But he wasn't the only one who kind of saw this coming. After federal investigators raided two of Diddy's homes back in March, we kind of had an idea something was on the way. Just this week, we learned some of the items that investigators collected during those raids of Diddy's homes in both Miami and Los Angeles. According to the indictment against Diddy, investigators seized more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricants from his homes. It's clear that Cassie not only feels love and support from family and friends, but also from strangers because she said exactly that in her statement when she posted to Instagram this morning. Cassie went on to say that the outpouring of love has created a place for my younger self to settle and feel safe now, but this is only the beginning. Domestic violence is the issue. It broke me down to someone I never thought I would become. With a lot of hard work, I am better today but I will always be recovering from my past. I was up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. Her statement came after Diddy posted his video, which again, if you remember, contradicted his statement saying that everything that is being said about him is a lie and the backlash was massive. Not one single celeb has defended him or supported him or spoke up on his behalf or his character. And I think that's what made her feel safe to finally speak out publicly. We hear it all the time from DV survivors, how terrifying it is for them to have to speak up against their abusers. So for her to have to go against someone as powerful as Diddy 
must have been incredibly terrifying. I truly don't think she expected this much support and I'm truly happy that she's feeling it. And it's very telling because she not only started her statement off that way, but she also ended it saying, this healing journey is never ending, but this support means everything to me. I'm glad she's on the road to healing, but I just truly hope she understands how very strong and brave she is. I have to be honest, guys. I've, I've been very, very critical when it comes to Cassie. Um, because when I read the lawsuit, I was like, why were you with this man for 10 years if you're going through this, right? Wouldn't it be just smarter for you to just leave? But uh, then I was talking to a friend of mine about this. And as she explained it to me, she said, sometimes it's not that easy. I mean, you could have kids with this person. Like you could, there's a, there's a lot. It's nothing that I understand personally because... I've never been through a such a toxic relationship where I've been harmed myself because your self-confidence gets destroyed by this other person, right? It has to do with the validation that you're receiving from that person. And the more and more they destroy it and they lift it up, they destroy it, they lift it up. It's almost like it, it becomes a drug and you need that from that person. That person is the only person that can validate you. So they almost have like a chokehold on you, no pun intended. But psychologically, I'm starting to understand why women stay. Just because their self-confidence, self-worth gets beaten down so badly. And the only person that can lift it up again is the abuser. So it's a, it's a horrible form of Stockholm Syndrome.